like to uh, invite Dr. Sanjay Asrani. He's going to talk to us on OCT for diagnosis and progression. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you, Vinay. I presume the mic's working and you can hear me back there. Thank you. Um, this is how my patients feel when I tell them that you have to undergo a visual field test at the next visit. So uh, relying on uh, OCT to make a diagnosis and to monitor for progression is a way of influencing people and making friends. Your patients will not hate you. And uh, we have a direct correlation. The patient uh, who has been told that you'll get a visual field test at the next visit, they decide not to come typically at that next visit. So let's look at uh, establishing a diagnosis. Uh, the commonest uh, place where people want to look is what I call kindergarten um, level OCT. Is it red? Is it green? Is it yellow? I mean, we, we, we can rise above that. We, we need to look at the least colorful part of OCT, which is right here. It is, the, it is the asymmetry between the two eyes, and that is going to tell us where the problem is. We can also see the nerve fiber layer defect on the red free. We can see the loss of tissue here. And last, we come to the normative database. We have been used to looking at cup to disc asymmetry. So when we look at the cup to disc asymmetry, we realize that there is a significant difference between these two eyes. But remember that the OCT is the only modality, or the OCT printout, I should say, is the only modality that eliminates the presence of the nose between the two eyes. It can bring these two discs side by side. You know, when you examine one eye, by the time you cross the nose and go to the other eye, you've forgotten what the size of the cup and disc is. So this is the only place you can see how that there is a difference in the size of the disc. That's why there is a difference in size of the cup. Of course, the OCT will tell you that it is all normal. Once again, I want to remind you, look at the least colorful part of OCT to confirm that it is indeed symmetrical. Now, macular thickness in glaucoma and normals was not known until the late 90s. It was only in the late 90s that we created an instrument called the retinal thickness analyzer, which was the precursor of the OCT, that allowed us to look at normal retinal thickness and retinal thickness in glaucoma. And the only paper that I could come across was Van Buren's paper on the description of ganglion cells from 1960. There was nothing else written since then on the effect of the glaucoma damage in the macula. Fast forward to spectral domain OCT. This is the map you see typically in spectral domain OCT in the total macular thickness. Mind you, this is not GCL, IPL, all those other alphabet soup. This is total macular thickness. Why? Because it is very easy for the algorithm, software algorithm, to identify the ILM, or the inner limiting membrane, and the RPE, because they are the two most reflective layers of the retina. So the total retinal thickness is a perfect surrogate measure of the loss of tissue. And besides the loss that occurs with optic atrophy and many other cases that I showed yesterday, glaucoma is the predominant cause of loss of retinal thickness. So we did not have a normative database when we created this thickness map. We had to create this thickness map from scratch. You may realize that we are measuring this in the form of 61 cross sections across the posterior pole. Why 61? Because in 2009, that was the total capacity of my hard drive. I couldn't measure more. So since then, it has been 61 lines in the posterior pole. But we didn't have a normative database. So we took advantage of the same thing we always look, symmetry. 
symmetry in nature. Therefore, macular thickness is also symmetrical. And therefore, any asymmetry is very easy to identify. If you look at the asymmetry, you get a display. Sorry, that thing is not wanting to stay. But we'll show you more. You get a display of the difference between the two eyes. The nerve fiber layer circle scan, and by the way, the images that I'm showing you are from the Heidelberg machine, and I do not have any financial interest in Heidelberg uh, engineering. The circle scan right here shows you everything is normal. But that's not telling you everything is normal. It's the average of that quadrant that is normal. That's why you have to look at the raw scans. You have to look at the focal loss. But it is easy to miss, isn't it? Because naturally, we are all going to go to the kindergarten level when we've got hundreds of patients. We're going to see where it is green, where it is red. But if you look at the macular thickness of this same eye, it's not going to be easy for you to miss this loss of tissue that is co corresponding to the nerve fiber layer thickness. Now let's look at a complete example. You can see in this case, there is a loss of nerve fiber layer, there is a loss of thickness, there is a loss of macular thickness, and you can see that there is a superior paracentral loss. Now, there is also a normative database that allows you to see what is the loss of nerve fiber layer compared to normal and loss of ganglion cell compared to normal. Here is an example of a asymmetry between the two eyes. And you can see that there is an arc-like asymmetry in the right eye, indicating this very subtle thinning. On the 3D reconstruction, you can see the gutter here of the nerve fiber layer defect, which is right here. And you can see it on the color image. And the best value you realize of the OCT is when in the morning, your staff tells you that the OCT machine is not working. That's when you start getting panicky. How, is, how are you going to go through your day? We are so dependent on the OCT machine. But there are some clinical skills that come to save the day. For example, you see how these blood vessels are dipping in and dipping out? That is one way to identify where the nerve fiber layer defect is. So you have to look at the blood vessel, if it is dipping in and dipping out. Of course, you need a, a dilated exam for that. How do we use OCT for progression? We use this clinical profile. We look at the pink area, which is the change from the baseline. We look at this loss of tissue and confirm that indeed it is loss of tissue that is happening. Mind you, it's all green. So if you go with a, that le green level, you're not going to find any change. It's here. You can see it. Can you look at the macula simultaneously? Yes. You can see the baseline measurement, subsequent measurement, only five months later. And you can see a huge loss of macular thickness that is happening both superiorly and inferiorly. What is the cutoff that I use? Numerical values. For the sector value, I use 10 microns because the standard deviation is 4, so two standard deviations 8, and we round it off to 10. So if there is a 10 micron or more difference, there is a likelihood it is real change. Mind you, I want you to notice the global RNFL is not changing even. So global RNFL gets completely muddied by the effects of the other sectors. You can see, for example, progression using the OCT, using the Cirrus. The best strategy, if you do have the Cirrus, is to use the pano map, which is the entire area of the retina, because then you can correlate the RNFL and the macula. This is with OptoView a similar type of RNFL analysis, GCC analysis, and you can get a slope also. Now, here is this same patient that I had started to show you getting worse 
despite the best care I can give. You can see the macular thickness loss happening. You can even look at the inferotemporal thickness loss going down with time. But you see this, this part up here? What is that? Did that patient regrow their nerve fiber layer? Yes. See? This loss of nerve fiber layer? See? Thickness is grown back. How can that be possible? It's very simple explanation. It's a disc hemorrhage that causes a thickness increase in the nerve fiber layer. Now, there is, in this example, you can hardly see any change happening. You can see maybe there is a small change out here. So you zoom in and you see that there is a small, very, very small change out here. But because it is on the superior slope or sometimes on the inferior slope of that main peak, you have to look at the macular thickness. And then you see that there is a definite arc. So that small loss there was real. It is glaucoma getting worse. In normal pressure glaucoma, the classic changes happen more towards the temporal part, like right here. You can see it is more towards the fovea. It is right in the middle of the posterior pole and not in an arc-shaped loss in the high pressure glaucomas. In patients with the epiretinal membrane, you can still see an arc-like loss. You can ignore the distortion that happens. And remember, this machine does give fake news too. This is complete absence of nerve fiber layer in one quadrant. Two minutes later, you take the image again, and now complete normality. This happens because the technician was not taught to bring the image into the middle of the window. And then posterior vitreous detachment, as you can see, is pulling on the nerve fiber layer. And unfortunately, the 3.4 millimeter circle is right on the same area where the Weiss ring happens. So when the vitreous pulls, the nerve fiber tissue may appear thinner. Like in this case, you see nerve fiber layer thickness is getting lesser, but there is no change in the macular thickness. And that's because the vitreous has been released. I'll skip this example. But this one I do want to share. This is how I learned to cure glaucoma in my spare time. This is a patient who came in 2010 with complete loss of nerve fiber layer. In 2012, the patient had regrown all their nerve fiber layer. How does that happen? Uveitis. Uveitis causes swelling in the nerve fiber layer. So if you catch somebody in the stage where there is active uveitis, what you see is a small cup is not real. What you see as a normal nerve fiber layer is not real. Now you start treating the uveitis and the cup starts increasing and the nerve fiber layer starts getting thinner. And that's because the edema is going away. That's why the field doesn't change. So in conclusion, don't accept the software's interpretation or stability of, of, of stability or progression. Confirm. Examine the raw image. It takes time. We owe it to our patients. Look at coexisting pathologies. Rule out vitreous mischief. Confirm changes of the nerve fiber layer on macular thickness. And repeat measurement if you're not sure. Extreme caution if you are going to use OCT in uveitis. And be aware of non-glaucomatous patterns of change. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. It was a very nice